doing? What's up, peeps? Y'all doing good this new year? That's good. Casey, the, the good news is you put yourselves in a position to win the division despite mm -hmm. last week. But there's so much at stake in this game, mm -hmm. right? Just obviously the playoffs, coaches, players, you know. How do you handle that sort of, you know, by Sunday at 4 o'clock, we're going to have a lot of uh, answers to that? Well, there ain't no question. Well, as we approached it, we knew what our situation was going into last week. We knew if it didn't, it, it would lead to this. So from the player standpoint, coach saying everybody knew what was stake. It makes it a big game. One, we can say every game is big, but this is a lot, lot on the line. So we just got to concentrate and go try to win a game on the road. The, the first Panthers game, obviously the rain kind of made it a weird game, at least for a half, but right. to know how close they played to you guys and, and what you need to do to, to have more separation. Well, the thing we look back, uh, like for us last, to our game, I think they had like 34 rushing attempts against us. Now, maybe the weather had something to do with it, but it was also the week of their coaching change and this and that, and they made a point to run the ball. So we got a lot of runs. And last week against Jacksonville, they were only able to run it 15 times. So you are, you're juggling between what we're going to get, which I think they give us a good dose of the run based on weight. And they do a pretty good job in the running game. So that's – but you got to be ready for everything this game. That last game, there's also a lot of moving parts on defense trying to stop the run because of injury. So can you just speak to the importance of – Almost having a full, healthy unit going into this winner take all game. Well, there will be no excuses because we have most of our guys ready to go. So we got to just go out and go on the road and try to win a game against a tough opponent. And, you know, this, these guys have always, the last time we rolled into Carolina, it didn't work out so well. So we, you know, we know how they play at home. We know how they play in our division. So it's a, it's a big game. Your early impressions of Bryce Young after seeing well, the, the thing about Bryce, I can compare him to some of that. We've been had the luxury of seeing a lot of the young quarterbacks this year between Love and Stroud, and I think he's right there with all of them, you know. We're watching his scramble tape this morning, he's dangerous when he runs. He can make the throws. It's just, see, I was just talking earlier, when you look at young quarterbacks in this league, this is a tough league for veteran quarterbacks, and you throw in someone straight out of college, but I think he's got a bright future. He's talented, he's smart, and it seems like those guys rally and play around him. So I think they're, uh, the sky's the limit for him. You haven't given up any first uh, first possession drives for touchdowns, but obviously you want to start fast. So I know you emphasize that every right. week. Is it was it third down? Was it first down? What got you? Well, you, you know what? When we look back, when you look back at the tape, it was like the attention to details. It's like you know, early in the first drive, like I think we had a chance to go to third and twelve. We miss a tackle. An unblocked tackle that he goes for 13. Now to get a first down. We didn't do this. We didn't. It was just the details. And then, you know, you gave a team momentum in this league. That's how it goes. And we could never catch our footing from there. Did you get Mike Green potentially coming back and he's had a week to a practice team? Or he is, and then whether he's in play to come back and be on the roster again? As of, as of right now, Mike is still going, static, came back and is going through practice right now. We'll just have to wait and see how it goes closer to that. It seems like the details are kind of similar sides of the ball, that would be a fair assessment, and if so, what do you think maybe caused that? Because it seemed like guys were pretty locked in for that, that three game, or that four-game win streak. Well, I can't speak for the other side of the ball, because I had my own problems. So, <laughs> so, so uh, no, I just know is when we watched it defensively, we felt like it was a uh, attention to detail. This guys, it wasn't a lack of effort, and they just the attention to details in this league. If you off just a little bit, it's not it's not going to be good, and we were off a little bit. Coach, Coach Bowles also had said um, that, like, Everybody collectively was in like kind of a daze in the first quarter, and by then the bleeding, you know, had kind of started. And right. It's really tough to stop it at that point. Um, do you, do you kind of have any sense of maybe what what would cause that? No, it's just like we look back in in this league. It's just we like to say the whole at any given Sunday, and it just just wasn't our day. You look back at some of the games. If you kind of we kind of look charted and look back through our season, we got a lot of one score games where I thought, well, we were competitive. We didn't come out the way we wanted, but we we're competitive. With this and that, and for whatever reason, we just didn't get it going that day. And I hate to say it, but it happens sometimes. We just got to guard to make sure it doesn't happen again. You can't control the process of Pro Bowls and how they vote, but yeah. have you seen a guy have a better year than? 
Antoine Winfield Jr. and not get on that team? And I've been around. I've been blessed to be in this league for a few years, and I've been around a lot of good safeties, but he's going to be right there. And I'm saying from my standpoint, this guy should be up for all pro. This guy should be in the conversation for defensive MVP, and he don't make the Pro Bowl. That, you know, we don't get to decide that, but we know what he means to us and everything. And he does it week in and week out. You can't say he disappeared this game, this guy won. Was a true soldier, and kind of, I just my hat goes off to him, and I and honestly think it is a travesty. What do you think the reason was? I, I, I have no idea because you know you can see how our opponents attack us. They go come off the field and on the sideline. Yeah, when I came down, they say watch thirty one, watch thirty one. So everybody that we play is watching for him and accounting for where he is. So why don't he make the Pro Bowl? If you ain't a good player, they don't care where you are, you know. But when thirty one comes down, they want to know where he is, and we're going that way, or we're sending the protection this way. So that's that. It, it, we, we know we're lucky to have him, and we we know what he is to us. Well, in meaningful place too. It's not just that the stat sheet is, is covered in, in stats, but it's also going back to that first Carolina game. I mean, he he made that incredible play at the end there, that interception Ooh. that saved the game. For we were just game. looking at it this morning in my group. They had the ball with four minutes to go in the game, going down to the either tied up or win the game. And the interception that he made, they were throwing a takeoff route. And he took it, you know what I'm saying? Kalaja got the hit, and he made the interception. We were just looking at it and just like, we don't make this play here. We might be in a whole different situation here right now. So that's how this league come to make sure we're ready for Sunday. He's a guy that you guys trust um, with some really tough assignments that a lot of safeties would not be asked to do, right? Well, we're not. We're still talking about a guy who played nickel last year. Now we're about to say, look at all the jobs we have asked him to do from nickel to safety to this to free to down in the box, the things we ask him to do, the blitz to cover, to pick up this. And he's just a soldier, just oh, – I couldn't say enough about it, and I've been fortunate enough to have been around some really good safeties and Hall of Famers when I was in doubt. This guy should be right up there. He's a really good player, and he deserves the recognition. Part, sorry to interrupt. Have you been part of a win you're in situation, lose or not? Uh, first year at the Jets, 10-5. Yeah. That was the 10-6 years. Mm -hmm. We go to Buffalo. They don't put everybody on IR, shut the whole team down, and beat our brains in. Sure did. I've been there. So I got a whole lot to share with them in there. Hey, I've been there. When you approach a game plan this week, what improvements are you looking to see out of the pass rush? Well, the thing is, we know, one, if we've got to take care of the run and get him in passing situation, and it's going to be critical that we can put pressure on this. If we can't put pressure on it, it'll stand to be a long day for us. Especially on a rookie quarterback like Bryce Young, who's been sacked 59 times, it looks like an opportune time to get after the quarterback. Okay. He, I think it's 50 some sacks, but I just had a scramble reel of 90 scrambles. So he, he ain't trying to stay there too long either. So he is getting out if you're not disciplined in the rush. So the thing is, you want to tee off and try to pin your heels back and go get him. But then you got to be sound because if you're in four man rush, you still got a couple of gaps he can get through there. So we got to make sure we're tight on that. And we've got to make sure you're able to get in a passing situation because they have a lot of second and fours, second and threes, this and that, and then they run the ball. So you got to try to create them and put them in long yardage situation and hope to be able to rush and get to them. Another guy that's generated a lot of buzz throughout the NFL is um, the Diane Diaby and the success that he's had. I know that when he first came here, um, you know, I know he was playing a little different role when right. he played in college and, um, you know, technique-wise, he, but he had the kind of raw ability. Just what did you see? seen his development throughout the season in, in terms of kind of, you know, developing some of those tools that he can use. Well, you see him from the first, the physical tools were there when he walked in, a phys truly a physical specimen. But then when you just watch his improvement from day to day as he picked up the technique, start learning. And our system is not an easy system for a young player to come in because we do a lot. We're not a lineup in 4-3 or 3-4 and be, and that ain't the good way we do it. So it's a lot of moving parts there because then we ask them guys to do a lot. He's a rusher. He's a dropper. He ends up at three technique. He could be out there at nine technique. He could be and man to man on the time. <laughs> we have a whole lot of moving parts there. So to see where he's able to grasp the system and still be a productive player, that's just this kid has a bright, bright future ahead of him. Casey, I know it's been a tough year for Shaq on and off the field. Front half sacks is not necessarily what he's about, but how right. much did you miss him last week? And just 
You know, what has he brought to you aside from just sheer numbers when he's out there? Well, the one, you know, all Shaq has been through with injuries in his offseason. The, the, it's just one, I take, we to, take our hat off to him for what he was able to accomplish just to be able to make it back for us this season. But when you look at that, you guys probably wasn't privy to but before our game last week, you look out there, he is sprinting over there with the trainers to try to get to the game. You know what I'm saying? Really, some guys, I've been around a lot of guys, hey, I'm off this week. No, he was out there sprinting, coming off a groin to see if he could make it to the game. I've been around some guys that, hey, y'all got it this week, but not him. It just shows what kind of guy he is. And, you know, even going in, he's, I'm going to do everything. I'm going to be back next week. You know what I'm saying? That's what you want. Then all our young players look up to that, and he's great with the young guys. And then he's just a tremendous human being and a good football player. Last about, question, please. When you talk about bright futures, uh, obviously there's Yaya Diaby, but also Kalaja Kansi. What do you think is the next step for him in growing as an NFL player? Well, just keep just keep maturing their thing coming in, coming from college. These guys have to adjust to the strength level of these guys you're playing against. Some of these guards here, these are what we call full-grown men. And, you know, as they adjust to this and some of the stuff that worked in college don't necessarily work here. So you hear, as he adjusts his game and figure out what he can do, and this, the sky's the limit for him because he's a – one, a joy to coach and very coachable. If you do, you ask him, tell him to do something, he'll try to fix it right away. So be, continue to be coachable, and his ability will just take over from there. All right, that's all. Thank, Thank you. Y'all have a good year. Thank you.